to say that 40k has a lot of religious symbolism is uh, putting it a little lightly. One of my favorite examples of this is in the physical embodiment of sin. I'm talking about She Who Thirsts, or Slanesh, the god of excess and pleasure, and her realm, or his realm, the domain of Slanesh. Now, if you are familiar with Christian theology going back, um, way back with like Dante's Infernos, Dante's Purgatorio, Dante's Paradiso, Paradise Lost, you're familiar with the concept of all sin not being equal, or all bad deeds not being equal. Specifically in this case, the domain of Silanesh is broken up into rings, almost in the exact same way as Dante's Purgatorio. In Purgatorio, there are the seven rings of Purgatory, whereas in Slanesh's domain, it's the seven circles of hell, so to speak. I'm most likely going to say circles, just because that's what I'm most familiar with. Dante Alighieri and his legendary shit posting from the 1340s, I, I have to carry that legacy. If 700 years down the line, there are still records of me shit posting, please keep that alive. Starting with the seventh circle, which is the circle of avarice. Here you will be physically assaulted by wealth and beauty, unlike anything a mere mortal could conceive. With actual mountains of gold attacking and crushing any mortal caught in its path, dazzling jewelry and marble statues so large and mastercrafted that any mortal creation, no matter the skill or patience of the artisan, looks ramshackle in comparison. The floor is littered with gold coins, and this is by design, as the coins hide the bones of those crushed before them. All of this while the mortal is awake and aware, as each statue and coin brings with it a curse or a trick designed to punish those greedy enough to end up in the seventh circle. The sixth circle is that of gluttony, with endless rivers of wine and great halls holding great feasts with whatever foods could be desired. Upon consumption of the wine, the victim will find themselves unable to stop, as though their very body is paralyzed by the sheer ecstasy brought from drinking the wine. Eventually, the body of these poor souls will give out, and they will collapse into the wine, slowly sinking to the bottom and join the ever-growing pile of corpses fermenting beneath the calm river's crest. Those who consume of the food in the great halls, however, face one of two outcomes, both of which begin with the same inability to stop consuming as the wine. This time, however, the body will constantly grow until the chair snaps. This does not always stop, as sometimes the floor breaks beneath the unfortunate glutton as their bones shatter against the pile of quivering bodies beneath them. If they are rather unfortunate, however, a retinue of demons will appear to ferry the unfortunate bastard away to one of the great halls where they will be dined on, just as they had dined before. The fifth circle is the Circle of Carnal. A lush beach awaits the unfortunate souls here, with winds that seem to sing and maidens playing the most beautiful of melodies. On this beach, there are very attractive men who will attempt to coerce those who pursued the carnal desires of the flesh. If they do pursue these men, however, they will reveal themselves to be demonettes and they will just tear you to pieces. The fourth circle is that of Paramancy, where visitors are granted visions and dreams of them being at the top of whatever field they desire. Military distinction, political offices, cheering masses adoring you. No glory is outside of the realm of possibility for the fourth circle. With these dreams, however, comes the price, as whispers start to dance around the minds of these visions. Treachery, dissent, and all feelings of malice bubble up and fester until their minds can no longer grasp the sheer madness. And so they break, allowing their husk to wander into a ring of traps concealed by the visions. Third circle is the simplest in my opinion, that of vainglory, where the greatest achievements of one's living memory are twisted and contorted until nothing remains but a deep resonating, tormenting failure. Essentially, you just get haunted by your worst nightmare. Circle 2 is that of the Heavenly Palace, where every visible inch or centimeter calls to the traveler, beckoning them to take a brief nap or respite along its pristine surface. Upon closing their eyes, however, they will be sent into a deep and never-ending coma. Finally, in the first circle is the Palace of Slanesh 
herself. In the palace, she who thirsts graces the unfortunate souls with her divine presence. Should the viewer feel even the slightest ounce of pleasure upon looking at the form of a god, they shall be devoured and consumed by she who thirsts. It has been said that nobody has returned from the seventh circle, but then again, demons lie.